Hi everybody and welcome back. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood is winding down, but we still got two more to go before the change comes. It's still set for Friday, still full of clouds, showers, and some storms possibly, and definitely some cooler air thereafter, and not such a nice weekend, certainly by comparison as to what we're being spoiled with this week. Still more to come and still updates to be made to your weather forecast. I'll get to that in just a few seconds. A couple of reports. We'll deal with things coming up later on in the week. One, a major announcement coming for the Royalton area and for the viewing area at large and at whole. Uh, we will talk about how the governor and first lady are poised to make a major announcement. Here in McGoffa County, I'll actually kind of give you a little bit of that announcement tonight, but there will be much more to talk about, and I need to let you know when and where to be if you'd like to be a part of that. More on the missing man from McGoffa County. I spoke with his mother earlier today. I didn't feel a thing, but I had some folks I just now got off the phone with before sitting behind the desk who says they did, and whether or not it's related to something that was felt in the western part of the state, I'm still trying to figure that out, maybe with your help. We'll see. A whole lot of other news and information, and now what's left to follow in the half hour. With that, we have learned limited information tonight about a tragic accident. All I know at this hour is that the Kentucky State Police out of Post 9 says they're investigating a fatal accident that happened last night. What we understand for their investigation is that four-year-old Eli Bullock of Lick Creek, Kentucky was a passenger in a vehicle. The vehicle went over a steep embankment and the four-year-old was thrown from that vehicle and sustained fatal injuries. He was transported to the Pikeville Medical Center from the scene by the Transtar Ambulance Service, and he was pronounced dead by the Pike County Deputy Coroner on duty, that being Zeb Hampton. As far as where the accident happened, we know it was in Pike County. Other details were just limited as of airtime, but it appears as though a tragic accident has claimed the life of a little four-year-old boy by the name of Eli Bullock of Lick Creek, Kentucky. Lick Creek, of course, a common name for a whole lot of counties, and we'll hope to find more maybe even before I leave you tonight about a tragic death of a very young person. Well, in the sports world, the University of Kentucky Wildcats certainly shook things up. A lot of fans didn't stick around to see it, fortunately. Uh, some did. But nevertheless, if you want to catch the next football game, there's also going to be some fine entertainment before uh, and just before. Just to let you know, Montgomery Gentry is going to perform the pregame show at 4 and encore, on Encore, I think, at 445. And Marlena Van Hoos from Johnson County is singing the national anthem. So I don't know what other reasons you would need to go see Kentucky hopefully take out Auburn. And that is going to be this Thursday night. Keep that in mind. It's going to be a great game, we hope. Uh, and this, of course, after major, <laughs> after a major uh, overcoming of a two-touchdown deficit about eight minutes to go against Eastern Kentucky University this past Saturday night where it looked as though the Colonels were going to make history, but the Cats took them to overtime and uh, just made the real game out of it. Not one necessarily wanted to see that way, but it was certainly a good ending for Wildcat fans. I didn't feel it. I'm only coming into the newsroom to have a message left from one of our viewers and trying to piece the uh, puzzle together, so to speak. So we're asking for more input from some more viewers. We do know there has been a confirmed earthquake. It happened in the Shelbyville area before 11 o'clock last night. I have some viewers telling me that right at the exact same time or very near to, well, they felt possibly a similar situation. I know it's a little faint, but if you see the yellow star up there just to the west of Louisville, between uh, east of Louisville, obviously, <laughs> between Louisville and Frankfurt, well, that indicates roughly where an earthquake was felt. That's the situation. A small earthquake shook people out of their beds in Shelbyville. I don't know about literally, but it definitely woke a lot of folks up right around 10 or 8 or 10 till 11 last night. Uh, we know that Shelby County uh, EMS personnel says that a lot of folks were calling, uh, not quite sure what they had felt or heard, some of them describing a large explosion. Now, this map does come from the U.S. Geological Survey, and they've confirmed that a 2.6 magnitude earthquake centered right at six miles to the north, maybe northwest of Shelbyville, was the reason for that boom and all of the vibrations and shaking there after now one caller did say that it shook them out of bed telling 911 dispatchers uh, and there were many calls about similar experiences to some degree now my information is, is that coming into the newsroom alice arnett from middle fork here in mcgolfin county says that unaware at the time that there was anything going on in shelbyville that she was awoken to a clattering of things in her cabinet and in one instance I think it was underneath the sink when she went in to see what the noise was about 
The items had literally vibrated out and onto the floor. She also tells me that a fellow neighbor in the same area experienced a similar situation, wanting to know if it was an earthquake as well. Now, right now, I have not had any contact back from anyone with the U.S. Geological Survey to find out if there is a link. Their maps don't show there being any uh, connection or correlation between the two. However, Arnett and her neighbor were very descriptive and definitive as to what they felt. So, I'm asking you, if you live in that area or anywhere else that you felt something of that nature, please give us a call. We're making calls to the U.S. Geological Survey to see if they are related or not or what we can find out about what caused the disturbance in the Middle Fork area of McGoffin County. So, your help and input, greatly appreciated. This report to come, but we want to make sure we get some information out there now as we're learning of some company coming, that being the governor and first lady coming to McGoffin, specifically the town of Royalton this Friday to make a major announcement as it pertains to the Dawkins Trail. I have scheduled to have someone in here on Thursday to tell us more about Friday's event, and then Friday we'll have the governor and first lady and some other folks here in the studio, or at least on your television, telling us about the big day. But I want to go ahead and give everyone fair warning as of right now because a lot of folks I think will want to be there as it will officially be announced that Royalton is now to be a trail town. Ladies and gentlemen, this takes a lot of work to get and achieve such a designation, and it means a whole lot to tourism and the local and area economy. Economy. It will open a vast many doors and uh, allow them to grow much more even than they already have in the Royalton area and surrounding the Dawkins Trail. It is an exciting thing. We've seen other small towns just now in around the viewing area start to see that designation, and the towns that have prior to have really, really seen tourism just almost exponentially increase. The work almost exponentially continuing on the Dawkins Trail. Of course, this will be uh, the overpass over Oakley as they're building the support for that bridge, a more than million dollar project. And you can see work signs going up. It was obvious there were a lot of projects ongoing today on or near the Dawkins Trail. So just wanted to make that mention make that mentioned to you tonight that sometime around noon on Friday the exact location still yet to be determined due to the impending weather changes but the governor and first lady to make that announcement and it's not going to be the only major thing happening during this event or ceremony I think we'll hear some other big news uh, and I think a lot of information to be had about the Dawkins Trail and how it is soon to be completed and to be a marvelous addition to the eastern and viewing area eastern kentucky and viewing area that is so more thursday about the event and then we hope to see you at the event and if not we'll have it all on friday night's program here on your news today to get high speed internet on their state of the art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions or to watch tv without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality or stay connected with family and friends with 24 7 telephone service you can always depend on contact foothills broadband today or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at foothills broadband the mother of a missing mcgoffa county man who has not been seen for well more than a week now she told me in an earlier telephone conversation that she or any members of his family have had any contact with him. They have contacted the Kentucky State Police and the Sagersville Police Department, at least one of which I was able to reach just a few moments ago, to learn that they too do have cases open and that so far no one has any information about the whereabouts of this young man. Juan Garcia has not been seen for well more than a week. I believe it was actually a week this past Sunday. His family um, had not actually seen him a day or two before that, but officially missing, I believe, since Sunday. And from what we understand, he was last seen driving his family's four-door Volkswagen Jetta. It's a 2006, if I'm not mistaken, silver four-door Volkswagen passenger car. And he was uh, on his way to stay all night with a friend, was what he told his mother before leaving their residence. I spoke with her today. She says she's not seen or heard from him since. Uh, she has also said that she's gone to the lengths of going to the campus of the Big Sandy Community and Technical College where he is a student. Uh, she spoke with classmates, school personnel, administrators, and others, and he's not been seen there since uh, about the same time he was last seen by his family. Uh, he speaks Spanish as well as English, uh, works here locally at the Mi Hacienda restaurant where his family works and uh, runs and owns the establishment as well, I believe. And 
lives in the Lick Creek area of McGoffin County. We know that per Officer Josh Peace's statements that he has opened up a case into the missing young man but has since not been able to gather any real leads. The family who we hoped to get more information and talk with uh, personally and maybe with an interview at a later time says they have contacted the Kentucky State Police as well and they're asking for anyone in the public's help. They just want to know if he is safe and sound and possibly his whereabouts as well, of course. You can call the Mi Hacienda Restaurant at 349-6800. I've also been given a cell phone number at 404. This is a 606-404-2539 number in helps of helping, hopes of helping to find their loved one. Once again, well more than a week since he's been seen. Health fairs happen from time to time, and they truly are a wonderful service. More often than not, they give folks in the community a chance and opportunity to get services for free that can otherwise be costly, and they also tend to gather a lot of services and put them into one location. A case in point, a health fair tomorrow at the McGoffin County Health Department. Passport is an insurance provider that traditionally operates in northern Kentucky, but they're helping fund a health fair tomorrow at the McGoffin County Health Department, and there are several purposes to it. They want to speak with individuals who might be interested in signing up on their insurance, and they, as well as the health department and other health care providers, are going to be offering free diabetic screening tests, which can be costly. And they're doing so in an effort not just to help those folks who may or may not know that they have diabetes or prediabetes, but also to get some sort of a log or a better scope as to just how prevalent the disease may be. Passport is an MCO that are putting, they're giving some money to put on a free health fair here at the health department tomorrow. Uh, for diabetes screening, uh, anybody wants to sign up or needs some more information about signing up on the insurance or anything like that, we're going to have people here for that. Uh, and the health department's going to offer some stuff too, but it's basically just, uh, we'd really like to get a lot of people to come in and, and get uh, a diabetes test because that's, we're trying to, to get a, a kind of a registry of all the counties because it's such a problem here in Eastern Kentucky and this is one way we can do it, is just give a free offering for that, let them come in and we can write their name down or age, get a little information and we can put it in a, you know, how many diabetes cases, you know, we're dealing with pre-diabetes and, you know, and a lot of people don't know they've got it. So it's, it's a good screening process for us. It's always going to be charged for if you get anywhere else or you want to use your insurance for it. But tomorrow with the diabetes screening, it's, it's just free. Uh, we uh, will be offering some vaccines, but we, if you've got insurance, we'll be doing that with the health department. We will be there and it'll be a little, probably a little quicker. There's going to be some nice door prizes. I really don't know what they are now, but there will be door prizes given away. So it'd be, you know, and I'd like to see just a good crowd, everybody come out and at least get their, get their sugar checked, get their diabetes checked. So you don't have to be fasting or nothing like that. Just come in as you are. It takes you about five minutes. Stick your finger, a little blood, and sit around and talk with us. That's, that's about what it's going to amount to. And then there's going to be some other things. We're going to have booths set up on smoking. If you've got a smoking problem or you don't want to quit smoking, we'll have information on that. And uh, our hands program. Just generally what's in the health department and what Hope offers too, Hope Medical, because they're in partnering with us on this. So. And flu shots, don't forget your flu shot. Great opportunity there as well, says Shepard. I got a happy 66th birthday starting off our calendar tonight to Yogi Bear. That's Kermit Yogi Bear Gibson with a whole lot of love from a whole lot of family and friends. Happy 66th birthday to you, Yogi Bear. The Kearney Free Will Baptist Youth Group is having a soup bean dinner this Friday. They're going to deliver to Sigersville businesses soup beans, fried taters, cornbread, onions, sauerkraut, just $5.50. Call 349-6249. If you can get your order in by tomorrow this time, well, that would really give them a leg up. 349-6249. McGuffin County High School Key Club has put their haunted house together one weekend only this Saturday and Sunday, 7.30 till 11.30, and it's going to be at the old Sigersville Grade School behind the Board of Education. That's this Friday and Saturday night. Uh, actually, it is, well... They've got, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Can you tell I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this one? It says the 10th and 11th, but it also says Friday and Saturday night, which is the 9th and the 10th. I'm going to go with Friday and Saturday night, and the dates are wrong. I'll verify that tomorrow. Just get ready to support our key club from the McGuffin County High School and get a little spook out of it as well. Kids, just three bucks to get in. Adults, just five. A Harvest Festival, the annual event at the Lakefront Church of God, is coming up this Saturday, 10 till 6 
at the old, of course, Middle Fork Elementary School, food, handmade crafts, games, prizes, bounce houses, music, silent auction. They're going to have sorghum made and sold on site. They hope you'll drop by the Lakefront Church of God this Saturday for their Harvest Festival. Starts 10 in the morning, goes till 6 that evening, and it's always a wonderful time full of all sorts of goodies. Revival coming up at the Bethel Bible Baptist Church on Route 30, and it starts Saturday and goes through Thursday, 7 o'clock nightly. This is your invitation to join them at the Bethel Bible Baptist Church for Revival starting once again on Saturday. And I, oh, I hate to even mention it because... Oh, just the thought of it, and I'm talking about the actual holiday, not the event that's coming up in November. It's time for Christmas in November, the annual Arts and Crafts Show in the Community Center. It's going to be held on October the 30th and 31st, but if you want to set up inside and have a table, you need to contact them by no later than the 23rd. You can do so by calling 349-4409 or 349 22 one three, the deadline to submit uh, your name to get on the list if you want to be a vendor inside the Christmas in November event inside the Lloyd M. Hall community in Sagersville is the 23rd. We kind of have a loose deadline around 3 o'clock to make sure your announcement gets on the program that same day uh, if you want it then. And if not, just send it to us anytime. We'll get it on, certainly, and tell everyone about it. Mail, phone, fax, email, Facebook. And remember, you can always catch the show again on yournewstoday.com the following day. We'll be right back after these words. Earlier today via a report that I found in the Floyd County Times that pre-filed legislation just this Monday would go to help create jobs and boost the economy in Kentucky's coal-producing counties. This is a bill sponsored by Senate Democratic floor leader Ray S. Jones, co-sponsored by Senator Johnny Ray Turner. What they're asking for is that this legislation would go to be implemented and require that not just 50, as it has always been, but 100% all of the money generated by coal severance taxes will be returned to those coal-producing counties in which they were generated. And from what I can tell, support for the legislation has been unanimous, certainly from county judge executives that the paper spoke to and others all in support of seeing 100% of those coal severance taxes returned to those counties that produced it. Now, Jones was quoted as saying that the country may be recovering from the recession, but Kentucky, despite an overall, an overall increase in employment, still has regions where people are going through some hard times, especially in eastern Kentucky where mining has played a vital role, in the, vital role in the economic makeup of our area and returning the coal severance money to these counties could be a critical step in job creation, economic development, and frankly, he says, the future of eastern Kentucky. The coal severance tax has traditionally been levied at 5% on every ton of coal that's mined from the earth in the state of Kentucky. And in the past, 50% of all that revenue that's generated from the coal severance tax has has been prorated for expenditures in coal producing and coal affected counties while the other half goes elsewhere. However, with the declining tax receipts, Jones says that all the tax revenue needs to go to these counties to allow them to focus on creating jobs, which was, he says, the original intent of the tax. Jones represents the 31st district, which includes Elliott, Lawrence, Martin, Morgan, and Pike counties. And he says that with mining communities suffering, we must take a more aggressive stance in creating new jobs. And he believes that seeing all of the coal severance taxes returned to these mining counties will be a very significant step in that direction. Well, I certainly agree. We'll certainly be following that report to see just indeed how far that bill makes it. Here's tonight's weather forecast brought to you by Licking Valley RECC. There's been a little fog to work its way in the forecast. Otherwise, for the next couple of days, still gorgeous, <laughs> beautiful, and above average for the most part. I have 76 and falling at a little after 6 o'clock this evening, falling to around a low of 53 degrees, I suspect. Now, keep in mind, mostly clear skies will accompany that nighttime low, as well as some patchy, dense fog, I think maybe mainly after 1 in the a.m. or so. Now, that patchy, dense fog will stick around for about eight hours, up until about 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, your Wednesday, hump day, it's going to be a nice one to get over. 79 degrees, mostly sunny afterwards. Another low back into the low to mid-50 range, partly cloudy skies tomorrow night. Otherwise, there's not much ill that could be said about Wednesday's forecast, except that working inside all day could be detrimental to enjoying any of it. 
<laughs> I hope you get a chance to get out. Thursday, more of the same. The last of it, too. Upper 70s again. Still a little fog at the onset, followed by that fog late tomorrow night. But 78 for your high, 61 for your low. Still mostly sunny above. A few clouds late that night. Nothing else to speak of but a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And that, indeed, will be the last one like it for a few days. Not for the forecast period, just a few days. The change does come about Friday. We'll have a front roll in that does give us a slight chance of showers before noon, and then an increasing chance of showers and thunderstorms to the tune of 70% by Friday afternoon. Friday night, showers likely, mainly before midnight. We'll see some rain, possibly some storms. We'll see some cooler air with a daytime high of around 72. Not a great drop in temperatures yet but certainly a downward trend with some showers and storms and some clouds and a low of 53 Friday night. It will be a wet one Friday night, I do believe. Saturday will recover with some sunshine, not so much with temperatures to follow suit. 63 for your high, 43 for your low, but we expect to dry out. Mostly sunny, mostly clear skies late on your Saturday. It's going to be gorgeous and temperatures, uh, you know, closer to where they should be, but still on the cooler side of things compared to today and tomorrow, and even Friday for the most part. Nevertheless, it's going to be dry and sunny and nice. And ditto for your Sunday. 69, sunny, mostly clear late. I've actually got temperatures starting on Saturday with those low 60s, upper 60s Sunday. By Columbus Day on Monday, we're still seeing nothing but full-blown sunshine. Mid-70s and upper 70s by the week's end. Another nice run at some more beautiful weather. It all starts slowly on your Saturday, but picks up by Sunday and thereafter. So Friday, indeed, is pretty much the only real bump in the road. But it is a pretty good bump. That's it. Another full day of news already on tap as it stands right now, and I suspect there will be more to come. We hope you'll join us for all that for another edition of Your News Today. When we see you back here tomorrow after what I hope is a beautiful evening for you all. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.